Here we have a simplified Lego vehicle that is going to simulate independent and live axle suspension. At the front of the vehicle we can see that articulating the wheel happens independently, that is the left and right hand sides can move without affecting each other. Whereas on the rear of the vehicle we have a live axle, we see that the wheels are connected. So if we articulate the suspension, both wheels move at the same time. Here we have independent suspension in a real car. The wheel closest to camera can move up and down without being affected by the other wheel. Formula One cars also have independent suspension, although they're very stiff and it's hard to see them move. Here we have a live axle suspension where we can see the front wheels are connected by a beam. They move up and down together. A road car with live axle suspension. We can see the differential in the middle and when one wheel bounces up and down, the other one is also connected. An important note is that with independent suspension, the wheels articulate when you look from the front or rear of the car. Whereas on live axle suspension, they articulate up and down looking from the left or right hand side of the car. For suspension to move properly, they need a ball joint or a rose joint. The perfect example of these is found in human shoulder or hip. What's important to understand is that they allow more than one degree of movement. They allow rotation. The cheapest and most common is the ball joint, which is found in the steering of most cars. Inside is a ball and socket with a lot of grease. The most common place they're found is on the end of a suspension control arm to allow steering. More common on race cars and go-karts is the rose joint or heim joint. They consist of a spherical insert inside a spherical housing. This allows them to have a wide degree of movement. Pictured here on this race car, we can see on the left the ball joint allowing articulation up and down with a little bit of side to side. On the left of our independent suspension, we have a McPherson strut, which is very common. It has a single control arm separating the body to the hub and then the coil over strut, hence the name strut. The strut is fixed rigidly to the hub. When we articulate the suspension, we can see that the camber changes and becomes a little bit more negative. This animation shows the McPherson strut in action. On a car we see the ball joint at the end of the control arm and the strut going up and down to ride with the bumps. On the right hand side we have a double wishbone setup. It has one and two control arms and the coilover strut is mounted to these. We can see when we articulate that the camber remains quite steady. The wishbone is named after the wishbone from a chicken. In this animation, we can see the suspension mirrors the wishbone, having two mounting points on the chassis and a single on the hub. Formula One cars have double wishbones, also called double A arms, because the suspension arms look like a capital A. You cannot see the strut, however, on a Formula One car, as they're hidden on board. This push rod system keeps the struts out of view and uses an arm attached to the control arms to articulate the springs. This allows for a very compact and aerodynamic design. This vehicle has live axles both front and rear. Because there are no ball joints, when the suspension is articulated, both the left and right have to move together. If we remove the suspension struts for clarity, we can see that now we still have the same articulation except that the wheels can move independently and rock up and down from side to side to negotiate various terrain. However, now we have a new problem. Having two links and ball joints allows the axle to move from side to side, which is very unstable. Switching to the other side of the car, two links without ball joints locks the motion to travel only up and down. The solution is the four link system which in addition to the two outer control arms, adds another two links that head diagonally inwards towards the centre of the chassis. We can see that the up and down articulation is retained, 
and also the independent left to right hand side articulation. But most importantly, the side to side lateral movement is now locked. Our 4x4 in schools kits also have four length suspension. There's two outer control arms, two inner control arms, which are arranged in a triangulated shape, and then we have two coilover strut suspension items. The axle also has a great range of motion for rotation, but no side to side lateral movement. Here we see a triangulated four link setup in a real life car. And finally, we see a very similar system in action on rough terrain. The next example is what we call a three link system. We have the outer control arms as before, but instead of the third and fourth link, we have a single diagonal link called a panhard bar. As you can see, we still have our up and down articulation as well as our axle rotation, but any lateral movement from side to side is prevented. Here is a three link system in action. We can see the panhard rod mounted diagonally and connected by row's joints. The suspension can travel up and down, but there's no side to side lateral movement. There are other live axle systems for you to explore. Shown here is the Watts link. A swiveling arm is attached to the center of the differential. From here, two arms travel outwards to the chassis, the mounting points shown here in red. This geometry limits side to side lateral movement. Finally, we have a ladder bar system, which is commonly used in drag racing. There are only two links, but they are mounted in a way that prevents any rotation or lateral movement. The suspension can only travel up or down. Even on something as smooth as a drag strip, there are still a lot of bumps to negotiate. 